You may be wondering if you should vary your snake's diets or not. I compared the nutritional content of three prey items. What I found made me restructure my snake's diets. By the end of this video, you should have a better understanding if it's bad to deviate, or should you feed variety, or somewhere in between. Well, to start, we must define what minimum levels we're looking for in the first place. Here are some rough recommendations. Now there were other sources, but their data seemed to be working off from these two, so they were excluded. So the question is then, what prey items meet these values, and is there a problem feeding things like chicks? So I've taken three reputable sources, worked out an average of the three to give us an overview of the nutritional content of mice, chicks, and rats. It is worth mentioning here that the diets of the rodents will affect their values. Some of these sources used multiple suppliers in their sampling, so for the purpose of this video, they're pretty much fit for purpose. I will stipulate though that I haven't included things like quails and other prey items because some of the data is incomplete and it wouldn't have allowed me to do the calculations that I'm doing in this video. So let's start off with the adult mouse. Three different sources with an average percentage of calcium at 3.22% and an average 2.5% phosphorus. By dividing the calcium by the phosphorus, that gives us a calcium to phosphorus ratio of 1.3 to 1. Now the requirements of most vertebrates is 1 to 1 to 2 to 1, so this meets requirements. The average crude protein was 57.2% and the requirements are 30 to 50, so this meets recommendations. There are no recommended values for fat, but you will notice that the mouse had on average the highest crude fat percentage at 26.6%, with the chick lower at 22.5%, and a rat at 17.7%. Vitamin A ranged from 150,000 international units per kg to 578,272 international units per kg. Now this is exceptionally high when compared to other prey items listed in the sources, but with only 5,000 to 10,000 international units per kg stated as required, it's safe to say that it surpasses this. Because the vitamin A levels from this source are so high, I have a creeping suspicion that there was actually some carotenoids in the gut of the prey items when they were analysed. Now the paper does not state if the rodents were fasted to empty stomachs prior to analysis or not, but the paper does recognise that high amounts of carotenoids in the diet leads to high vitamin A hepatic liver storage. So, you would assume that this would have been a consideration in their methods, although it's not stated, so make of that what you will. Vitamin E was 100 international units per kg, half of what is recommended. However, it is plausible that that recommendation may be too high for snakes, as many of the prey items listed by that one source fell short, yet snakes have been maintained on these for decades without signs of deficiency, and it met the requirements for all trace minerals listed. Now the rat has an average calcium percentage of 4.7% and a phosphorus of 3.06%, with a CA to P ratio of 1.5 to 1, which is higher than that of the mouse, so it falls within the accepted range for vertebrates. They had an average protein percentage of 57.2, and vitamin A is listed as at roughly 150,000. Vitamin E was 139.2. Then again, all listed trace minerals met requirements. Now, the chick, the food item that everyone assumes is deficient, Average CA of 1.83%, phosphorus of 1.3%, with a ratio of 1.4 to 1, giving it a marginally higher ratio than the average adult mouse. So it would appear that the claims that chicks do not have a suitable calcium to phosphorus ratio for vertebrates is actually untrue. You do not have to worry about chicks being deficient in calcium. Protein on average was 65.8, which is higher than both rats and mice. The chicks meet all trace mineral requirements apart from manganese. Now Arbuckle proposes that the manganese levels found in the data may actually be unusually low for Dell chicks, or that the requirements using borrowed knowledge of mammalian carnivore requirements for magnesium is actually too high and that snakes actually might require less. Arbuckle also states that snakes raised by him on an almost exclusive Dale Chick diet had a typical growth and body condition. This would also suggest that vitamin A and vitamin E in chicks are of suitable levels, or of course they would be showing signs of deficiency. 
I use these three prey items because they have the most complete data sets of the most commonly fed prey items. That being said, have a look at the published data of the other prey items listed in the sources yourself. Things like quail, although they don't have phosphorus listed in the data, logic would dictate that obviously they are grown on animal, so they would have a more ossified skeletal structure than dale chicks. So logic would dictate that you can pretty much be safe to assume that they would have a one-to-one -one ratio at the very least. So we don't have to worry about chicks being unsuitable. But the question remains, is variety the way to go? Or is a sole mouse diet the way to go? Here's my logic on this. Let's work on the assumption that the mice truly do have the amount of vitamin A listed and that there isn't any sort of data anomaly there. Now, if levels truly aren't this high, some animal nutritionists believe that there could be a one optimal prey item for a certain species, while others believe that variety is key. It's hard to quantify how enriching varying the diet actually is, how reinforcing differing tastes, smells and shapes to manipulate are to each individual snake. The enrichment aspect is an important consideration. As we've previously found, adding chicks to the diets of snakes is of no detriment as they're perfectly suitable. Then it's my opinion that other whole prey items would fall within a similar category they would most likely meet the requirements of snakes. So one camp believes that variety is the way to go, and one camp believes that sticking to a mouse-only diet is the way to go. Now again, you can see the argument for both. If the levels truly are that high in mice, then I think a sensible approach would be to go straight down the middle. 50% mice, 50% variation. So what I would do in terms of this would be I would feed a mouse one feed and on the second feed I would do a rotation and then back to a mouse on the third feed and then a rotation and then a repeat and go on. That way then potentially half of the diet is still that optimal item and the other caters to that behavioural enrichment aspect and other nutrients that they might get from that. But also, I believe that this approach could actually save you money. If we go off the work by Arbuckle yet again, then the average price range for chicks in the UK is as follows. 4 pence to 25 pence for, per chick. And the average price range for frozen thawed mice is 50 pence to £1.50. Now if you're alternating to a chick every second feed, on a feeding schedule of every two weeks, you know, this is rough maths on the assumption that every month was theoretically exactly four weeks, then that would be £18 for six months just feeding mice. But if you're alternating, then those six months would cost you £10.50. So potentially you could also save money while also adding enrichment to the snake. Now there are concerns over people saying that a snake might get stuck on chicks. To me, if this happened to me, I don't think I would be too concerned. One, we've already established that the chick is perfectly suitable for a snake. And if it were to happen, it would be saving me money anyway. So <laughs> I'm not too concerned with that. If you're in a situation where you really can't access anything other than mice, then I don't think there's too much concern for you to be drastically worried. But if you're like me in the UK and you have access to X, Y, and Z, then the 50-50 split seems like a sensible approach to me. I'm not gonna tell you you have to do X, Y, and Z. I merely want to present what I found and how I'm implementing it and then you can make your decision from there. My theory would be to provide the preferred prey item as the second variation, but I haven't exactly fully hashed out my methodology on how I'd like to preference test my snakes. I'm getting there, but I think there's gonna be something for a different video. If you like this, then please leave a like to help this video along. And if you want to check out what your snake species might be potentially eating in the wild, then watch this video.